Welcome back to the wizard shop and it's Cobra time again. Another one. Let's get started. Before we get started, we definitely need to hear this thing. Why don't you go ahead and start it up? Mike, magic mic. <clears throat> yes. So when this thing starts up, you can hear it means business. These cars mean business. They're not for cruising on a long family road trip. They are to do burnouts and haul ass across the countryside. That is exactly what they're meant for. And racing. You can race them as well. This one is a 2016 Cobra replica. And it's easy to say, Car Wizard, we just saw one of those. No, you didn't. You saw a Superformance Cobra replica. That is not what this is. This is a Factory 5 replica of a Cobra. A completely different company. Yes, the cars look the same. They are not the same. The frame is not the same. The engine in here is not the same engine as you saw on the other one. The dash, to, we're going to, anyways guys, there is huge amount of difference. We're going to take a look at that today and we're going to talk about why this one is here. You can see there's some subtle differences here on the intake on the Superformance. It was one large gaping hole, but this one has two separate little divisions. And here is the oil cooler. It does not have red AN fittings. It has some elbows here. It also has these little screens to keep rocks and things from breaking and hitting the, the glass. The wheels were obviously similar. They're the knockoff wheels that you actually undo this lacing wire and take this large three winged nut off. There's no lug nuts, just like on the Superformance. As we come down the side, the exhaust does not have any heat shields on it. You remember the Superformance did. This one's just regular, I mean, just open pipe. There is no heat shield, so you definitely want to be careful on the exit on this one. Again, really fat tires in the back for good traction. In the back, it's very similar. And as we come around to this side, The fuel filler is a little different location. It also has this windscreen here. That's also so if you were to turn the vehicle over or something came by to hit this, it wouldn't hit directly onto the filler neck. Again, the side exhaust is different. The differences on the exterior are subtle, but there are there. Let's go ahead and open the hood. And here we see not a 427. This is a 289 Roadster. It also does not have a four barrel carburetor. It has Weber's for two barrels. These are very cool carburetors. They have very good throttle response and they make it sound really good as well. One thing I like about this engine bay, the engine itself is a little smaller and you can just work around it. There's so much more room in here. For a guy who wanted to own one of these and fix it himself or work on it himself, this would be the ticket. I would not want the 427. I would want the 289. I don't need to have so much power that I can wrap around a telephone pole. just like to have fun and go sporting. So that's the engine bay. It's definitely different. The way that they did the steering rod is a little different. And the radiator is laid out a little different and also this X here for the framework was not present on the Superformance. Here we have the brake master cylinder and it has its own little individual reservoirs here. And then the clutch master cylinder is inside of there. It also has its own reservoir. This was not on the Superformance. It was completely different. Also this sheet metal was different. It wasn't there. One thing that's common on both of them is a very simple accessory setup. You have an alternator and a water pump, and that's it. There is no power steering, there is no air conditioning, there is no smog pumps, there is nothing but charge your batteries and keep the engine cool. So let's go ahead and let Mrs. Wizard give you guys a tour of the very small interior. So we do have a little bit of a difference in our dash in this model. We do have our oil pressure, our RPM, our water temp, our battery 
amperage. We have our fuel gauge and a hole. Actually, no, it's down there, but the wizard's gonna talk about that in just a few seconds because that's one of the issues with this car. Otherwise, it is a nice leather wrapped kind of panel. It does have a fiberglass dash, which is actually part of the actual exterior of the car. It's not separate. It just goes straight through underneath the windshield. We do have a rear view mirror. This time it is attached to the actual dash itself and has a simple adjustment knob on the bottom. We can see with our gear shifter that it is a five speed and obviously stick because that's what makes this thing a blast to drive. As we move over to our seats, they are true bucket seats. And you can definitely see that we have a lovely five point harness there to keep you anchored in the car. Door cards, there are none. Um, they just don't, didn't put them in this model. Um, one difference is, is that we have a leather strap that makes sure it doesn't go open too far. And the other Cobra we had in had a strap that went from kind of across the front there to make it easier to get in. Now you just grab the knob over there and pull it to the side. One of the biggest differences, it's kind of hard to show in here, you may have seen on the extra review, is we have now one heck of a roll bar that goes all the way from the floor all the way behind me. So behind the driver. So if you were to get into a wreck and you're driving, you might have a chance of survival. Passenger, not so much. So sorry. As we get back to our steering wheel, you see it is wooden, just like it was on the Superformance. We also have our lovely Cobra symbol in the center. And notice, no safety here, no airbag, no airbags in our pillars. You better be driving very careful again with this thing. But again, you're not taking this out on a Sunday cruise. This is going to the track. I'm curious what this looks like underneath. So as you can see, there's already some major differences between the Superformance and the Factory 5 replica Cobra. There can be arguments made that one's better than the other, this is better or that's better, this is a nicer car, this is cheaper. You can go different ways all day long, but really what it comes down to is preference. This probably would have been the cheaper model because they don't spend so much time on the interior trying to make it all frills and fancy and leather door cards. And This would be for someone who's more concerned with performance they just want to get out on the track and have a blast. If they can save 20 grand or 10 grand, not putting so much effort into the interior, they just want to have fun with the car and it still looks amazing. Does it make it less of a car? No. No more less than a Lambo versus a Ferrari or this or that. You could say this one's got blah, blah, blah. Arguments can be made all day long. It really comes down to preference. It also comes down to availability. A lot of people buy these used. This one here, like I said, is a 2016. Really is what it comes up for sale on the market. If you found a factory five and you're happy with it, do you want to wait six months or a year or longer to find a Superformance or vice versa? Maybe you prefer to have the factory five replica. But regardless, I would choose the factory five replica. Because, just like I mentioned, I'm not so concerned about it looking like a Bentley on the interior. I didn't buy it to be a Bentley. I bought it to go have fun and have a blast on the track. That's exactly what this thing would do. It does have a smaller engine, the 289, which means it's going to have a little less power, a little less grunt. But I'm fine with that because, just like the Dodge Vipers when they first came out, or some of the Z06 Corvettes that are coming out now, people are wrapping them things around telephone poles. Two is so much power on such a small package that people who are not really that great of a driver are getting in and just hammer down and just bam right into stuff. It's dangerous. It really is dangerous. If you know what you're doing, the 427 would be amazing. It'd be just gut wrenching power. But I would be more interested in having fun just as sporty, albeit fast. It's still going to be very fast. The speedometer you saw is sitting in the center console because it reached a thousand miles on the odometer and then it just quit. Luckily it's a very common gauge, it's a Stuart Warner 550 BP. I was able to locate an identical down to the very part number gauge to go into the center here. I could take that apart, I could probably find the gears, I could probably fix it and it would cost as much or more than just I think the gauge was a hundred something, but it wasn't really that much at all. 
When it's cheaper to replace it, I'm not going to burn up the customer's cash. For what? The new one is on order and when it arrives, since it's only a thousand miles, I will attach a small drill to the speedometer cable and run the new one up to a thousand miles so it matches what's on this right now and it will be as if nothing ever happened. So let's get this thing up in the air. There is major differences underneath. One thing I noticed right off the bat is two little ducts here that direct air to the brakes. Those were not on the Superformance. As we come under here, we can see the radiator setup is completely different. There's the X member I talked about. But the Superformance had a square or rectangle tubing frame. But if we look down here, it's big, beefy, round tubing all the way back. This cross member here is also round tubing. There's a nice aluminum oil pan. As you can see, the setup underneath here has zero in common with the Superformance. Here we can see the engine accessory belts and everything. Very easy to get to if you needed to do a harmonic balancer or a front main seal. Very, very easy to maintain. No leaks under here. Everything's in good shape. Here's an SFI bell housing that mounts or adapts the engine to this transmission. It is a Tremec transmission, maybe a T5, and it works very well as well. Again, here's some more of our round tubing cross member. It does have the little short drive shaft, just like Superformance, but as you can see, the rear axle setup is not independent rear suspension on this car. On the Factory 5, they have a solid axle. It does have a panard bar and track bars and all the things to, to keep everything in order, but it is not independent rear suspension. Our fuel tank setup is different. This is a plastic cover with the tank up in here. The Superformance was metal. Here's our battery tray. There is a fuel filter right above there. We have adjustable rear shocks and disc brakes all the way around. And on this one, you can see actually above the fuel tank, you can see into here. You could not on the Superformance. It's just difference in design. Again, it's not a difference in better or worse. It's just different. So nothing serious going on underneath this Factory 5 Cobra replica. So let's go ahead and get it back on the ground. So we talked about the differences and we've seen the differences between the Superformance and the Factory 5 Cobra. But we haven't answered the question, why is it here? Not completely. The concerns were for the customers, the speedometer, actually the odometer was no longer working. You'd like to have the fluids checked out and make sure everything's good to go. Just a check over of the entire vehicle. And also, it had been sitting a while and the customer tried to start it and there was very long cranking times. And rather than damage something or cause any issues, he just said, you know what, I'll just take it to the car wizard and hopefully nothing's wrong. And very luckily nothing was wrong. It just needed to be primed to get the fuel system primed. It started right up just like it did now. The reason why is because it's set a long time. It does have a mechanical fuel pump. So as long as the engine is turning, you're pumping the fuel. But if you just turn the key on, nothing happens. You're not priming the system. You just have to crank and crank and crank, and that can be kind of disconcerting to someone who's like, why is this taking so long? Well, it just needed to be primed, and luckily that's all that was. So we solved the starting problem. It just needed to be primed. We're going to solve a speedometer problem. We're going to do some valve cover gaskets, which they were slightly leaking, and also there was a small coolant leak that was found a thermostat flange, or the housing had a small leak, and the customer also was aware of those problems. We'll get those taken care of. We'll get the speedometer installed. There really wasn't a lot to do to this thing. It's in really good shape. So if you're curious what kind of tools we're gonna use to fix this Factory 5 Cobra, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and we really appreciate it. And make sure to hit the subscribe button because there's so many more cool videos to come. Thanks for watching.